30 minute session for Linda Love. This is the third session. If you're interested in checking out the previous two sessions, I'll put links in the description. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and read the goals here and get started. Okay, so chakra work, root for sure. All of it really. Whatever you can do for me, girl, I need help in the abundance mindset and how to create value. Got it. Okay. All right, root. Got it. Okay. I'm going to relax now and get tuned in. So let's just start at your root and see what it's like in there. So it's kind of, all right, just give me a moment. There's a lot of energy movement and it's getting jarred in my throat. So me just hanging out in your root. <clears throat> is actually already moving energy. I mean, I can't even believe it feels like I have a pothole in the solar plexus. I've got like a dry spot in my throat. My third, there's a lot of movement around the third eye. I actually feel energy coming down into the hips. That's just me standing in your root chakra, okay? <laughs> Hmm. But in standing in your root chakra, we're working on all the chakras at the same time. Okay. <clears throat> I'm just going to hang out here and then we're going to see what comes next, okay? There's a lot of distractions. I'm just in your root and there's all kinds of just voices male and female that are really trying to get your attention to look here look there look over the this 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 and I could imagine it's like all these ideas maybe I'll do this maybe I'll do that like but none of them are getting you grounded none of, them, none of them are helping you to stay solid they're just keeping you distracted from from a more of a solidity or a connection with yourself with your human self with how do I want to put this It could be distracting you from what is hearing the voice within your own soul guiding you. I mean, we're talking like a thousand faces. Um, all just like, look here, 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 look here. And so I'm just, I'm just getting them all collected here in a big old bag. <laughs> And we're just going to let it all go, okay? You're looking for something important, that's for sure. Maybe one of them has that thing you're looking for, that idea, that answer, that direction, that inspiration. Maybe one of them has the answer you're looking for, but none of them actually do. None of those faces or voices have the answer that you're looking for. You'll you'll be better off finding it just sitting in your root in silence than you will trying to filter through a bunch of thoughts is kind of what it's like. You're having a lot hard time letting go because you're going to have to get centered with yourself here. It's kind of nice to be in the dynamic of being inspired by other people, influenced, guided by others. Um, but you're going to have to listen to the internal guidance too sometimes. Ask yourself what to do. What would yourself say? It's, it's complex because what is the thought and then what is yourself? Aren't you thoughts and feelings and... Like, what is my actual true north, my, my soul saying? <laughs> How do I know it's not just my thoughts speaking to me? How do I, I know it's my actual soul speaking to me? 
So what I'm going to do, we're just going to continue to let go of the, even us talking about it is continuing to hold on to the distraction. So we're just going to continue to work on letting that go. And then I'm going to stay here in your root and we're going to just choose silence. Okay. Continuing to choose silence. <sighs> I'll just tell you what you're like. You're just like, mm, mm, ah, okay. Mm, mm. <laughs> like it's, it's like hard to be silent. It's just hard to just sit still. It's hard to feel like I'm not bored out of my mind by sitting silently for five seconds. Like, don't do this to me. No, <laughs> it's horrible, horrible, horrifying sitting in silence. But now we're getting the laughs out. We're getting the sillies out, you know, like that's step one sometimes just getting the sillies out. <laughs> Let's just talk about the obvious. The elephant in the room is you're having a hard time being silent. So let's just talk about the obvious. It's okay. We're going to talk about it. We're going to acknowledge it. And then we're going to choose to be silent again for a little bit. Okay. There's something that you're afraid of in the dark, in the silence. It's a man. He's got, he's got kind of a stout, heavy on his feet, but there's something classic about him, Even like maybe an attorney type energy. He's tall, but stout, maybe in his fifties, heavy on his feet. Um, Alfred Hitchcock. It's starting to look like Alfred Hitchcock in the dark. I I can't I know I this name um he's not the Twilight Zone. He isn't he something similar? Didn't he write some kind of similar stories like weird stories that were TV shows? It's so long ago since I even heard that name. But I just see the outline of a, a man. <sighs> Again, just describing him is bringing you into a heaviness. It's like allowing your energy to settle into your hips more. Allowing your energy to settle into your legs, on into your feet. So his, something about his stout his stance, he's a bit heavy on his feet, is, in, is actually bringing your energy down into your hips, into your feet. And there's a reason why you're avoiding him. You're not wanting to look him in the eye. You would rather dance around him. Um, just to feel like it's kind of like act like you aren't aware that he's there. So now he is the elephant in the room that we don't want to talk about. I'm cool with it. You're not wanting to acknowledge it. So I'm going to become you and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to acknowledge the elephant room. It's the guy who's heavy on his feet in the shadows. I need you to, to be true to what it is that you don't want to look at. Um, okay, hold on. You're afraid of him. Um, I'm just relaxing you down. It's like once you acknowledge him, then he acknowledges you. Now there's an interaction, there is a relationship, there is a communication that needs to take place. And you don't want to deal with that communication. You don't want to go there with it. You just don't. I say, look at how he's inspiring you to actually allow your energies to, to come down into your hips, into your body more. He's helping you. Everything in our life is helping us. 
even the things that we are quite certain are definitely not helping us, they're helping us. They're helping us with our lessons. The lessons then are the mysteries that we are working through. And we will complete some lessons in this life, at least get to a, a point um, where we've done what we need to do until we're ready to work on it again in another life. And some lessons will just continue through into other lives as though they never stopped. Me talking about them is making you feel sad now. <clears throat> You know, he reminds me of my grandpa. My grandpa, is, he died, um, I don't know, like 15 years ago or so. Maybe longer. My gosh. It's like, gosh, am I really getting that old now? Like, <laughs> man, we're losing track of time. Oh, it would be like 20 years ago. Maybe even longer ago than that, like 25 years ago. There's a reason why I'm even lost on keeping track of time. And there's a reason why he's reminding me of my grandpa. Because I remember my grandpa, I'm almost certain he used to watch um, John Wayne. And I'm almost certain Alfred Hitchcock was somehow in the mix there. I know that name from somewhere. It reminds me of my grandpa. My grandpa was also an attorney, and he was a bit of a stocky man, and so he was heavy on his feet. So maybe there's a grandfather, the energy here, there's a paralleling energy here. Um, something familiar to you. I'm not sure, but I'm just going to just tell you those little details that are coming to me as well. Oh, it's so... So, okay, this is the next thing. So my grandpa has, he could be very intimidating to some. But if you just be yourself or be honest, um, he will be there to help you with anything. And so he's a perfect attorney, right? <laughs> and uh, I feel that energy here. That you need to be honest about some things that you don't maybe don't want to talk about you don't maybe you aren't even aware that you need to be opening up about some of those things right now but us working on your root and this is coming out of your root is already activating that inspiration so keep your eyes open over the next days and weeks um for more authentic and honest self-discoveries honest conversations with yourself coming to terms with certain feelings about your life but there's angelic energy and the energy of ancestors that's there with you to help you through this and they're very good listeners and if you don't have any human people to talk to physical people you have your ancestors you have your family on the other side um, you have your soulmates, you have your spirit guides, but there's something about the family energy that's really tuned in here, like, um, like ancestor energy, like grandma and grandpa, and even great grandma and great grandpa, even um, ancestors you may not be familiar with, still supporting the bloodline. And that, it's sort of weird when you hear bloodline and then you think of warm family ancestors and then you think of bloodline. I don't know why the energy just gets a little weird. <laughs> bloodline, <laughs> I don't know. But that's, that's also part of the energy and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful love. It's a beautiful love for, for ancestors and family, the physical generations and heritage, family heritage. There's something about an older time. I mean, when I was much younger, 25 years ago. <laughs> wow, it was so weird. Could I really be that old already? Yes. All right, I'm being taken. This is also important for your root balance, but apparently I'm going to share some more of my, my history, okay? 
And so my grandpa smoked. And um, so him and my grandma, there, there's the kitchen and there was just a table here in the dining. I mean, it was kind of connected to the kitchen. It was all together. And so my grandpa would always sit on one side of the table, my grandma on the other. Um, and he would smoke. And they would wa- there would be the TV on a little roller, sh- shelf roller. Like, you would just turn the knob and it would come on. And it was just a small box. And you would hear John Wayne. And there would always be smoke. You could always smell smoke in the kitchen. And I just remember being young and that experience that memory and I there's something about the sound of TV during the day that really bothered me I when I was little like even when I was at my babysitters and then the soap operas would come on um, it, it it made me feel gross inside of myself like I, I never enjoyed the energy of what adults did during the day I didn't want to be anywhere near it <laughs> and it always had to do with really bad TV they didn't want to watch cartoons. They wanted to watch this weird adult TV. <laughs> That's what it, it was always that feeling inside myself. Oh, wow. Another memory is coming to me of avoidance because I didn't want to get picked on or teased um, or be the center of attention sometimes when I was really little because I knew if I was the only one in the room that you know grandpa would probably say something um to get my goat you know to to tease me to get me going (laughs) and I never knew what it was going to be what wild imaginative ideas that I would I would start to visualize and see as real and find out it wasn't really real There's something about me talking about this with you in your root and the connection with particularly like grandfather energy. Memories from childhood with grandparents. Really raw ones. Like the ones you don't really think about very often. I will say this whole conversation is bringing you so energetically into your hips, into your root. It's, I mean, there's a beautiful heaviness to the way this feels. There's a density. I mean, it's truly connected to being human at different ages, you know? Whether you're a kid or you're a grandparent or even an ancestor that's supporting the family on the other side, you know? There's an experience of waiting right now. You're actually okay looking into the eyes of this grandfather figure. And you're not embarrassed to be yourself or shy or anything. You're actually okay to just be yourself. And you're thankful that a little bit of a ripple happened that made you feel a little jumbled up and off balance in order for you to get rooted with yourself and remember authenticity your honest true self it's interesting because i'm i'm helping to harmonize the other chakras so the pothole that i was feeling is not nowhere near what it was because we're talking we're allowing the energies to relax and to flow We're exploring memories or the feeling that memories provide us. We're exploring the feeling of family. We're exploring the feelings of our childhood. We're exploring these things together. There is a letting go of sorts in here. And there is a bit of a kind of a merging between your root and your sacral chakra, which is it, it that's definitely happens. 
I mean, all chakras are basically connected to each other. So in your third eye, you'll find your crown and your throat and your heart and your on and on and on because all your chakras are already connected to each other completely like that. But this is where it's a bit, it's not, it's not uh, har harmonized. It's if you wanted to just look at the body as one chakra per location, um, it's like your root and sacral chakra are kind of like turning into a figure eight like they're a bit merged with the venn diagram you know like they're a bit merged and they need to have um root doesn't need to overcompensate for sacral sacral doesn't need to overcompensate for root so we need to find out what the healthy balance is here Yeah. All I'm going to do is just continue to sit and energetically share love with Root. But I'm going to put a duplicate self here in your sacral chakra. And as I do that, there's this burning sensation in the stomach here, in the solar plexus. And it's a little bit into the heart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be a red person in your root and I'm going to be an orange person in your sacral chakra and I'm going to be a yellow person in your solar plexus a green person in your heart a light blue person in your throat and I'm going to be a dark blue person here in your third eye and I'm going to be a purple person in your crown so there's just going to be me um, different colored versions of me um, just sitting Indian style in, um, in your chakras, okay? Just continuing to generate love from within. Continue to encourage your, your soul to just to really feel present as human. Gosh, the pain in my stomach. I'm just going to continue to sit with this here. It's like a heartburn feeling in the stomach. It doesn't necessarily go into the heart, but it is really loud in the stomach. So there's an imbalance with the pleasures of life, a sacral chakra. And so the root is trying to support and sacral supporting root. There's just, it's just, I'm still learning about it here. It's almost like you don't want to talk about it either. Because I keep saying, so what's up? You know, pleasures of life. What's going on there? What can I do to help? And you just kind of like create an X like um, don't need to talk about that or don't want to talk about it. It's kind of activating your third eye to now open and look at your sacral chakra. So the attention now is on your sacral chakra and it's kind of like why is everybody got to look at me? What's up? Like why are you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> this is literally like what you're saying. You got a staring problem? Why are you looking at me? I mean, third eye is straight up eyeballing sacral chakra here. <laughs> I say just let yourself be looked at. Just be exposed. Be naked to yourself. Ex be exposed. I am looking at a woman who is probably five foot tall, but she's wearing heels like like crazy like a foot tall platform forms or something and so she looks 
like it's it's really i don't know like she's wearing a bathing suit she's really attractive she's got some dolly parton looking hair but she has like crazy platform white platform shoes and so she looks really tall but she's really short <laughs> And she's in, like, a dressing room behind the scenes. And she's got, like, uh, feathers um, that she's wearing around her shoulders. And she looks like a sexy dancer in a way. Her She has tan, a tan skin, skin like, um, a nice tan. She's not super brown. Um, she has a nice tan. Her, it's like a, she's like a showgirl in Las Vegas. She's wearing, um... A, a bathing suit but it's it's not necessarily for swimming but it it's almost like such a interesting color of peachish pink um it's almost like you'd have to look twice because you'd think she was naked because somehow it it blends really well with her tan So is that why Third Eye is eyeballing Sacral Chakra? Because it looks like... But there's something about the shoes. There's something about authenticity here. I'm just gonna put her on her bare feet. <clears throat> so she's gonna be her natural height. I'm gonna take away all the hair so she just has normal natural hair. And this is interesting, but I'm just going to have her be a woman. So <clears throat> she's not wearing any clothing, but it's a, a beauty thing. It's about beauty, like an Aphrodite type energy. It's not a gawking, eyeballing um, pornography thing. It's an Aphrodite energy. It's the body is sacred and beautiful. There's nothing boring about it. The, the body does not need all these extras. It literally can be the way that you were born. It can be completely boring. And it's 100% natural and sacred and gorgeous. You're you really hard on yourself like there's a bit of a like a ripping off of the face and like ripping off of this appearance from the front side so you look like you're a billboard that has nothing on it it's just loving yourself for the way you are It's authentic attention. It's getting honest attention. Not the wrong kind of attention. How interesting. It was like offensive that, you know, this attractive Las Vegas dancer girl was being eyeballed. It was like it was offensive. But yet it was the, it, that was the whole point of being the attractive Las Vegas dan dancer was to be eyeballed. But yet then to be your natural self and to be loved naturally is offensive. So there's a, um, there's an imbalance here about attention and, um, an honest attention is not boring because it's the only way you're ever going to get to know who you truly are, your honest self. You need honest attention to reach your honest self. So you need to be as much so your honest self in order to meet honest people. Man. You're uh, the next scene, okay? Everything is still interconnected. It's 
like, okay, let's say murder scene and the body is taped. So there's the outline of the body. There's no body there. Where the tape is, it's sort of like a coffin that is made um, in the outline. But there's no lid. So you could go lay down in this weird, like, wooden body on the ground. It's empty right now. There's a lot of unreconciled anger that's behind the scenes. So if we could just punch through the bottom of, of this. I mean, it's it's like you could say it's like a sarcophagus without the lid, but it's in the shape of a body. Um, so you get rid of the bottom of it. And so it's like a cookie cutter. Um, and on the other side, there's all this rage and anger. Unreconciled anger. And it's completely silent. Oh, wow. I... Oh, this is pretty intense. Um, hold on. So, the unexpected happens. And all this anger and rage... Like, I'm turning into a person that is taking a bucket full of acid and then dumping it all over this angry person's face. And then I point and yell at him and I say something like, well, this will give you something to be mad about. So you want something to be mad about? Here, here's something to be actually mad about. Your face is now burning off with acid. So why don't you be mad at something that you should actually be mad about? It's weird. It's like, we get so mad about problems, right? My car broke down. Okay, you want something to be mad about? Here, bucket of acid on the face. Ah! Okay, that's like a totally different. That's like, wow, car broke down, bucket of acid on the face. Oh man, <laughs> that is interesting. Contradiction there. That's like, a, you know, contrast is what it is. But it is. It's instantaneously shifting your viewpoint. And you're saying, why am I hurting myself? Why am I? I don't want to hurt myself anymore. I don't want to hurt myself anymore. Oh my, it's like, oh my god, I don't want to hurt myself anymore, at all, anymore. <sighs> help me, help me. <sighs> and I just go and I give you a really big hug. I say... The only person you'll ever be in control of your whole life is yourself. And you can make choices. You can control any circumstance if you have the willpower, but it starts with a choice. You make the choice and you follow through with the choice. You see? Now you can change your life, you can change your outlook, you can change the people. I mean, you can change everything. Starts with a choice. <sighs> you say something like, I've ruined myself. Ugh. It's like um, a washed up old actress or something feeling like um, like my time in the the like the light the spotlight. Um, it's almost like um, it kind of has this feel to it. It's a bit of like a Hollywood movie moment from like the I don't know nineteen. 30s or 40s like you have this ultra lashes and this perfect black lighting for like a black and white movie and this but it's got this like beautiful woman who is a star and now you know years later she fell into drugs and alcohol and she's aged 
and her voice is rough and she doesn't look like she used to and she's just uh, trash she's just she's ruined she's damaged goods and you had this like new york accent talking about her what a washed up actress she is i don't know like that's some kind of hollywood movie going on in my head as i am experiencing this emotion that you're expressing And I say, there is no incorrect path. I mean, if that is a true path, you got to own it. Every choice that was ever made was the right choice. So that you could know what it's like. I keep hearing fall from grace. To know what it's like to go through that, ex that, that exciting ride. Every choice that was ever made was a choice that was wanted, you know, you were wanting to make at the time. And now, now you're in this time. So what are you going to do now? You're going to make new choices and discover yourself in a brand new way. It's actually exciting. It's like being born again. It's great. It doesn't have to be a tragedy. It doesn't have to be a disgrace or despair. It can be brand new. It could be a brand new day. You have that, that disgrace, despair, um, blaming yourself. I'm going to stick with this for just another minute. We're clearing a lot of energy out of your third eye and out of your solar plexus chakra here. The only way to enjoy life authentically is when you love yourself. Then the pleasures of life will be real. They won't be for the moment. They won't be because I feel like it or the thoughts. It sound like a great idea at the time. It's like, it's actually real joy, real fun, honest people, honest self-expression, family, ancestors, your, your youth, your childhood. Um, it's authentic. It's real. And it's being okay with your real self. It's cool. Oh man, you release so much, like there's so much pressure here in the mind, like you have released some major baggage there, it's, it's amazing, uh, it's like really incredible. So much energy has come on down and it's allowing you to be, feel safe being human and making human choices and living your human life and loving yourself in the process. it's it's amazing thank you so much for this experience it's like very delightful to connect with you linda love thank you very very much <sighs> okay and uh, for those watching if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com thank you all and have a beautiful day everybody